blessings beyond imagination. Blessings, everyone, everyone. I tell you, what a wonderful day it is. I'm so excited and so happy about today. Come on in. Come on in. I know y'all been waiting all morning to see our beautiful elder come today and speak about his new book, Elder Reflections, book one. But I want to tell you a little something about him because he has an amazing career. And you know, I have to introduce him, right, y'all? <laughs> so I want to just give you a background on this wonderful work that he has done, that he continues to do. So give me just a moment. I'm going to pull up this incredible testimony of his love and his gifts to us as a community. Oloye Ifa Karade, whose work as an author, chief priest in Ifa, and college professor have educated thousands on African and indigenous culture and spirituality. Chief Karade's groundbreaking book, The Handbook of Yoruba Religious Concepts, set a precedent for writing on Orisha traditions and was among the first, if not the first, internationally distributed books on Ifa. The handbook was followed by four groundbreaking texts, Imoye, a definition of the Ifa tradition, Ojise, messenger of the Yoruba tradition, Kamawarisha, and Ifa, a global perspective, as we lovingly call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the lawyer still wasn't done. He penned two Orisha-centered novels, A Place of Nights and The Souls of Myrrh. He also wrote an original screenplay called Serpents and Butterflies, culminating over four decades of initiatory experience in Ifa to the beautiful Orisha Obatala Obatala and to Ifa, which includes a historic pilgrimage to Ile Ife. Awo delivers once again with his newest book, Elder Reflections, Book One. The forefather of hundreds, if not thousands of Olorisha and Ialorisha, his students span the globe. I'm so excited, and I know you'll join me. Love to Shia Asante, host and producer of The Window, with an historic interview with our beloved Oloye Ifa Karate. Y'all give him some love. Welcome, welcome. I see y'all. Come on in, come on in, and thank you, thank you to Noble Trinity Media. D. Pepper Massey, I Ia Oni Shango Day for her support uh, with our show today. Baba, how are you doing today? <laughs> you just won't quit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay. You know, I'm just an old man in the wilderness. <laughs> you know, trying to understand the way of life and the nature of all things. So I, I give homage, and I'm, I'm deeply appreciative. And, I, and I'm honored, and I want to thank you, Ia, for the flowers, you know, while my feet are still on the ground and not in them, okay? Yes. <laughs> not yes. in, you know? yes. And to all the listeners out there, you know, it will come blessings, and peace, yeah. peace, and peace yes. of mind, and spirit. Yes. Yeah. Well, today, Oloye, my Baba, we are talking about your newest book, Elder Reflections, book one. And I'm so excited. I have been just knee deep in it. I just want to bring up a copy for everybody to see. See if we can get the can't, camera to focus a little it. bit. Can't see it. The light is showing. Uh -huh. I see it's just the, uh, okay, we might have to come back. I'll show y'all in a minute. We'll put it up in just a minute. Oh, there it goes. But this is Elder Reflections, part one. As y'all can see, I was bleeding out a little bit with my background. But I'll show you this beautiful book in just a moment. And I want to tell you just a little bit about it. Elder Reflections is an exhilarating compilation of the author's essays, poems, and short stories, and the screenplay. The text invites class discussions, reader responses, and visualization. The emphasis is on the acceptance of literature 
from a global perspective with core content being African-based, set in anecdotal and empirical, empirical evidence and study. The need to address functional illiteracy in urban communities is utmost and foremost the intent of this work. This is of course set up as the resurrection of a people made to suffer and believe that literature was not permitted to them and even worse, that they never truly possessed it. It's by means of positive descriptive word imagery and connectedness that this text implements in order to encourage literacy, proficiency, and be renewed as a result. And I tell you, this description, you when you open these pages and you start to read Elder Reflections, for me, it felt like I was going on a journey with you, Baba, uh, yes. to Africa, to the UK, to the Caribbean, all the places that you have taken Ifa yeah. into the prisons, into the communities, into the academic world. You know, you have inspired a tradition and a movement of Orisha spirituality, starting with your very first book, The Handbook which as i mentioned in the opening it is iconic and so many people were inspired to write books because you wrote that book so tell us baba what does it mean to be an elder in ifa and in the world well you know in your words it is as, as, as much as i kind of get possessed and write <laughs> The, the the journey uh, in terms of you know, uh, actual articulation uh, I, I i must state it 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 holds me in awe because when i am journeying globally you know when i am journeying internally you know there's so much to take in and, and, and there's so much to leave out. For example, you know, I'll, I'll take in the cultural aspects. I'll take in the connotations of the people. Not everybody does everything the same way. Uh, and they may be just as convicted as, you know, uh, the others, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm deep into my conviction, you know, and I may do things differently but that doesn't mean I believe even less. Okay. Now, when I when I take that in and have the appreciation for the multiplicity, I can only really encompass that and then encapsulate that in, inside of you know my growth as an individual, and then the manifestation of that you know, via my writing, lectures, you know, and uh, et cetera. I, I, I understand that I have to let go of my preconceived notions. I, mm -hmm. I have to open myself up to the realization of reality in, in all of its myriad of, of, of ways and, and expressions. And it comes through people, it comes through their beliefs, and, you know, it comes through their 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 governments. It, it comes through their levels of appreciation or lack thereof. So to be an observer generally says, yeah, we take in a lot, but it's important to leave out a lot as well. And that a lot is basically what we want to see and how we want to see it. You know, uh, what we expect people to be and. And if they're not like what we want to be, then, you know, then they should be ostracized and persecuted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then you're not learning, you know, you're just reinforcing, you know, and an, an ego in the negative sense. And you're building a wall of arrogance. And, and what I've found is that when I free myself of that, then I can see, you know. And when I look into the unseen, the unseen looks back at me and says, this is what we want to say. And we're going to use you as an instrument. 
of our unheard voice, of our unseen, so that people can perhaps get an understanding. So all of all my travels have basically equated, you know, to one thing, you know, can equate to one thing. And that's openness. <laughs> mm. You know? mm. Wow. Thank you, Baba. Absolutely profound. And when I look at the expansion of Ifa, you know, when you first, when I first met you 24 years ago, mm. and when I look, began to study, became one of your students. Yes. And when I look at the ways that Ifa has expanded to be part of, you know, house music, where mm -hmm. you have DJs that are weaving in Orisha music. Yes. When you have, you know, it being taught via AI, you know, all over the world using digital platforms. Yes. You know, where we can find the information and wisdom. And one of the things that you taught me and us Early in my journey was to be able to recognize Ifa in everyday life. You said, and I don't know if you remember this, but you said <laughs> that if you can't see Yamaja in the mother pushing her baby in a stroller down the street, right? Or the train, if you can't see Ogun in the train that is moving through the city, then you don't know Orisha. You uh -huh. taught us to see Orisha in everyday life so that we could see Orisha in ourselves. Ah, oh, shit. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. My next question, and I don't know if you want to read an excerpt today, but I want to talk about page 11 in Elders, Elder Reflections, book one. And Ia Onishango Day is posting the link. If you don't have the book, you can go on Amazon.com. We're posting the link uh, during the show and purchase it right now and get your copy in the next couple of days, along with uh, Oloye's other books. There are many of them to choose from. And there's new books coming, as well as a movie um, that will be done. And uh, But on page 11, you talk about the importance of the ancestors, which you have always taught your students and readers mm -hmm. how important it was to connect into the ancestors. It's kind of a funny story called Chicken Wing. <laughs> and it's so good, y'all. I'm not even going to tell you all. But in the commentary, and one of the beautiful pieces of this book, family, is that you can put your own thoughts. So you get to co-create with Baba um, through these essays and his teachings in this book, you get to co-create by sharing your wisdom and your impressions and your experiences as you're writing the book. Again, if you're just tuning in, welcome everybody. I see y'all come on in. Thank you, Ia. Oh, let me just welcome our guests that came to hear you today. Ia mm -hmm. Omi Segun is on from Houston. Uh, mm -hmm. Ia Nanina Ra from California. Mm -hmm. India Harville from Arizona, welcome. To El Bay, peace to all. Yes, welcome. And uh, Ia Oyaseke, welcome right here in Nevada. Giovanni Singh, right here in Nevada. Ia uh, Oshanike Onifade, who you named many years ago, is on. So, welcome everybody. Come on in. We are interviewing and having a discussion with the Oloye Ifa Karade. And today we're talking about his newest book. Elder Reflections, book one. And we are releasing this book. Baba's going to give you all a special gift. So stay tuned for the entire show, because at the end of the show, Baba's going to bless everybody who came on today with an opportunity to get both book. Well, I'm not going to tell you it's a surprise. So you have to stay on to find out. But anyway, Baba says on page 11, offering to our ancestors is an important part of Yoruba Isheshe. However, our offerings must transcend prayers, pictures, and plates of food. There is, as a suggestion, the need to remember heartwarming interactions and memorable times 
especially when life's lessons where are bestowed to reflect on our more immediate ancestors survival with dignity intact is worthy of reverence and veneration. Baba, could you share a little bit on this and what your inspiration was for this passage? Yes. Well, um, to, to just kind of look, uh, set the stage a bit, you know. They, they were saying, you know, that you know, young black boys and their grandmothers. <laughs> <laughs> That, that there's some sort of connection there that is is very pronounced and and, 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 and very 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 deep unfathomable you know and I felt that way about my grandmother and I need to never forget her and it, it, and it's it's not just you know a matter of oh I'm, I'm gonna put a picture on my altar you know I'm, I'm gonna like you know I, I I want to relive through my reflections and reflect through my reliving. And what comes to mind can't be forced. You know, it, it, it can't be, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to write this because I think it's going to sound this way. No, no, it, it has to be sort of a spontaneous and, and, and a heartfelt um, for example, I, I don't sit down and plan to write basically anything is that mm -hmm. I'm so moved. And upon certain times and certain events or situations, like when my mother passed mm -hmm. at the funeral, it reminded me of when my grandmother passed, you know, that, that, that synchronicity that brings together a culmination of of moments in experience and in time. So that dinner table time, you know, when I was in, in there underfoot, you know, and my grandmother was there with the flower shifter and everything, things you don't really see anymore. But, you know, coming up, you know, back in the 50s and all, you know, these things were commonplace for us. You know, the little ice cream makers, the flower shifters, you know, and grandma in the kitchen, you know, and chicken frying and all that kind of thing. And I'm like, I I, I can't forget that, even though for a long time, it seems like I didn't remember it. You mm. see, what, you know, the, we, we are all of what we are composite stuff. Mm. And there are times when we we try to knock on the door of it, but then there are other times when the door just opens for us. It's like, I knew you were coming, so I fried up some chicken. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yes. So, yes. As opposed to, you know, I'm being paid to write, you know, a uh, uh, an essay on my grandmother. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. So when this, when this came to me, when my grandmother came through me, through me, it's like how can I how can I best honor her? What what words can I place on that altar that come from my heart? You know. And and I pin this not just chicken wing that you're going to well you're going to turn into a chicken wing one day because I just chicken wings I ain't going to lie okay so, for any other part of the chicken give me them wings okay yes. and especially if if Granny cooked them right. So I wanted I wanted to put that for posterity, not just so that I'm remembered, but so that her wisdom is as eternal as her grace and her beauty. The fact that I can I can elaborate on it, the fact that I can compare that kitchen to a symphony, you, you know what I mean? The, 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 the fact that, that I can place this, you know, in in a form of proficiency, whereas in young students, we must say, yeah, when I'm in the kitchen with my granny, you know, they, they it, it starts to deepen as their experience, you know, and I find that paramount, especially mm. with distractions these days and 
you know, yes. everybody's growing up so fast and, 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 and just so much going on. And here we are, elders. And if we're not reinforcing the importance of elders, then how can we expect a young person to do it? That's, that's inconceivable. That, that does not compute. Yes. So. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I share Baba in the, uh, when we look at the crisis with our youth, mm -hmm. we see how important the ancestors are, as well as, like you said, the living ancestors, the, the ones who are still alive, the elders. Yeah. And, you know, in this book, Elder Reflections, book one, and understanding, you know, once that legacy doesn't exist in the physical, it is a huge loss and a shift. And so yeah. as much that can be invested in the relationship with the elders yeah. before they cross over, I feel like it will deepen um, the, the connection for life as well as sometimes save our very lives. Yes. Because I know as you know, the things that you've taught that in a crisis or a challenge, I'm able to draw upon and remember. Uh -huh. And it's, and like you said, it's not just the, uh, the ceremony or the ritual, mm -hmm. but it's the interaction. Yes. It's the phone call. It is the time spent sharing a meal or listening to your music you know, hearing a message in that, you know, things like never used to say, don't drain yourself trying to satisfy the emptiness in others. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times that quote, <laughs> it's like, you know what, <laughs> you know, saved our life, you know? And so these are the things that I think our young people are missing and they're turning to things like crystal meth. Mm -hmm. They're turning to gangsterism. Yeah. They're turning to so many destructive mechanisms instead of going and having a chicken wing with granny yeah. and sitting at her table. It's, and it's just and just having her love go into that food and into your belly. Yeah. That is a healing act to be able to do that. Right. So uh, I really appreciate this section. Mm -hmm. right. And just uh, on page 15, there was another chapter, I mean, the whole book resonated with me because mm -hmm. I'm a budding elder. Yes. But you take us back to the essence of nature on uh, page 15. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, do it so beautifully. And you write, again, if you're just tuning in, welcome everybody. I see y'all coming on in. Post your questions to Aloye and we will go back and read your questions. This is a interactive event. So Oloye wants to hear your thoughts. If you have the book, um, please say, I got my copy. But if you don't have the book, you can go online today and procure it. And Ia Oni Shango Day is posting those links. And so avail yourself. But I want to read page 15. Okay. It says, who can deny the essence and power of nature? Humans and perhaps other sentient creatures have personified nature in religions and myths, myths being the, re the religions of conquered people. And we, as sentient beings, have altered nature to appear as we do by a process deemed, and I have to see Baba, so he's a professor, <laughs> anthropomorphism. So my yes. mother taught me how to say it. Oh, right. <laughs> not big words, professor. <laughs> it says the point not one of religious convictions, but instead of human capabilities via our brains and various neurological systems to perceive, associate, and transcend our conditional mindset. In this sense, we not only believe what we see, but also see what we believe. Ooh, I got to repeat that. In this sense, we not only believe what we see, Yes, but also see what we believe. No judgment, just fact. And what we come back with from our walk into the realm of nature to make offerings and prayers is equally, if not more important than going in the first place and experience the moment at the moment we arrive. Are we heightened is the question 
most profound? And how do we now see things differently, even ourselves? Yeah. And again, if you have your copy, you know that below that, you can actually take this book with you out into nature, which I'm going to do, <laughs> and just take it in and follow those directives that the Aloye has just shared with you. And write your response, write your impressions, your feelings, your experiences of that moment. It says, most profound. How do we now see things differently, even ourselves? So, Loye, could you speak to that passage? Uh, you know, uh, again, there's, 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 there's so many words. Uh, the experiences are conceptions, you know. Our experiences have a way of conceiving us. Um, we, we, we become newborns, you know. We, we, we become more than, but never other than who we are. And by embracing this one ultimate, ultimate reality we we have a shifting of what i call the a shifting of the perspective paradigm we change how we perceive based on how we perceive okay and when we come to the understanding back to the ultimate reality that we're not in nature we are nature mm -hmm. That's undeniable, but yet it is consistently denied by either social engineering or you know, psychological engineering. There are ways to detach human beings from nature. Mm. You can either destroy the nature around them or you can destroy their perception mm. the perspective of nature within them mm. and I, I, you know I, I, as i pondered this i i began to have glimpses of portals if you will mm. that, that were opening up slowly and sometimes painfully to a deeper understanding. And that is in Ifa, Ishesha, Orumila states as the prophet figure, the elder sage, you know, many names, okay, that the ultimate purpose of being in this way of life. Is to become an authentic human being. Mm -hmm. Everything that you're doing has to lead to your authenticity. Mm -hmm. The who are you, the why are you, the where are you, the when are you. And at the core of that is your character development, Iwapuela, your mm -hmm. oneness with nature, Iwalewa and your ability to evolve without regression, to construct without being self-destructive. Mm. And when that becomes a concrete goal and not an abstract study or, you know, somebody just telling you in passing, it's like, no, th this is what the faith is all about. Mm. Not because I say so, but because the rumor says so. Mm. And left it there for us. Now take that and pour into that vessel, if you will, mm -hmm. the undeniable truth that we are in nature. Mm -hmm. Then we start to see ourselves in nature and we start to see nature in ourselves and we can dance in the rain. Okay. And, 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 and we can be at that river and we can stand on the ocean and we can be that mm -hmm. if we just allow ourselves to break from the conditioned mindset 
that a religions have to be all the, the all the more ceremonial and all the more uh, a belief in what is supposedly sacred script. And we deny ourselves the nature that is inherent. Then we, I, 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 I must say, I must say, we are missing out on so much of life. We are. We're missing out on so much of life. And when I started, uh, to, you know, to to reflect upon this, the words just poured through me. And this came as a result of, of the title, My Offerings to Oshun. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm out there, you know, with, with my Tai Chi and everything. And, and I'm, I'm starting to feel uh, Ijala, you know, with the, the, the poetry of the hunters, the poetry, okay, of the warriors. And I start to understand why they became poetic. I start to understand why the warriors become poets. Mm. Mm. Because they are open, their senses are heightened to such a point and a degree where they understand that nature is either going to work with you or you're going to deny it and it's going to it's going to work against you, not because of any directive against you but because you're not at one with it. And that's not nature's fault. That's our fault. Right? So I'm out there with my Tai Chi, you know, everybody, I'm the old Tai Chi man around here. Don't buy elder. I don't bother nobody. Don't nobody bother me. All right, leave me alone. Okay, so I'm out there. I'm communing with nature and I see this little dandelion surrounded by, a, you know, uh, 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 an army of grasses. And it's just, just one little dandelion. And I wanted to go take it and put it on my shrine for Oshun, because mm. I'm son of Oshun, you know. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Oshun. Mm. So I went over to, to pluck it, and something said, don't pluck it. Why, why, why do you want to take this from the life that I've given? Mm. And I said, well, you know, we take things all the time. We do all kinds of things. Said, no, 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 no. If you're going to understand the wonders of things, just let it be. Let it be, let it grow like you're being let to grow. Mm -hmm. I don't, Oshima was saying, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, of course, I'm like, okay, all right. I'm tripping right now. You know, folks are like, you know, <laughs> what's going on? I'm over there talking to the little dandelion and they're <laughs> in the grass. So, I come back the next day. Now, I'm an elder. Sometimes short stories can get long. So, y'all bear with me. That's all right. It's wonderful. And it's not there anymore. It's 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 been cut down. Mm. The lawnmowers, you know, the guys come and they cut down and it so that all the petals are all over the place. And then I was like, oh, I was devastated. I mean, really, it was like, you know, somebody killed my mama. Yes, <laughs> you know? yes. You know, I'm a yes. mess. You know, and and internally, I was crying. I was like, I felt that so deeply. Mm. But then the voice came to me at 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 whatever level of deepness that I was experiencing and said, it wasn't about you putting the flower on the shrine. It was about you putting your sincerity on the shrine. It was about oh. you putting your love for me on the shrine. It was oh. about you being in your nature that you gave the nature of you to the nature of me, Oshun. And I love you for that. Because oh. anybody can go out and put anything on an mm -hmm. altar or a table, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean they love. That doesn't mean they're sincere. That doesn't mean that they are communing with the Ori of the Orisha, right. the spirit of the Orisha, because Orisha have spirits. The Orisha have an Ori. The Orisha have love, mm -hmm. and they have a response to those who love them mm -hmm. sincerely and deeply. And how mm -hmm. are you going to do that if you don't give the nature of yourself Mm. Mm. to the nature Ooh. of all. Mm. Ashe, Baba. Ashe, the nature. We're talking about 
the essence of nature family for those of you who are watching online and welcome to everyone i see all of your beautiful posts i'll read some of your comments to the aloye one of the things that uh, uh Io oyaseke writes young black boys and their grandmothers talking about that <laughs> process that you just spoke on i totally agree my sons were all very close to her a beautiful connection they had and still have with her now being our mighty ancestor uh, so speak on the passage that we just read and uh yawo adefumi says i just purchased my copy <laughs> awesome awesome when you can take a picture of you holding the book and mm -hmm. post it if you're in the group you can post it in the group or send it to the aloye and he'll post it in the group in the caraday nation and uh jennifer welcome jennifer yay colorado boulder i share aloye maritza from oakland one of our newest babies who just got her sacred beads says sure. that hit so hard we are nature versus going out into nature and experiencing feeling so small and insignificant and that being the comfort rather than being fully connected to the beauty and being part of the perfection divine so giving love yes i shall welcome welcome everybody and if i missed it please repost your question your thought on the passages if you have a copy of the book if you have a question ia ominike segun says aboru aboye abosise baba karade what an honor to hear from one of my elders Thank you for always returning the teaching and healing to the community. I shall, yeah. Thank shall. you so much. And welcome Janine, India Harville, Nicole Smith Johnson, all of you who are on. Wow, the numbers are just getting bigger and bigger. We're so happy that you're here. Pinky says, <laughs> I just purchased my copy as well. Right now. <laughs> Yeah, blow it yeah. up and y'all don't forget to post the review because the reviews really <sighs> elevate our ranking on amazon so once you finish the book if you will please go and write a great review if you love the book about elder reflections book one if you're just tuning in we are interviewing the aloye ifa caraday chief priest author of many, many books, screenwriter, and amazing, amazing teacher and professor. I call, I named him this. He doesn't say this. I'm always doing stuff, but I say he is a professor of African theology and culture because he has spent over 40 years preserving our traditional African culture, theology, and teachings across the world. And welcome Oshun Yomi Ifaleri. Adeyemi, welcome, Yawo, says, loving all of this, placing our nature on the shrine for Oshun. And uh, Yawo is a new initiate, recently received Odu Orisha. Mm -hmm. And so you are seeing your forefather today and meeting your forefather. Blessing. So welcome. It's a glorious day to have the Aloye with us. I want to go to page 23. And yes. it's just so much in this book, y'all. We, we're going to go over just a little bit because we had a technical difficulty when we were starting. So we're mm. going to go over just a little bit to give y'all the full lesson of Baba. But on page 22 in mm. Elder Reflections, book one. Oh, uh, Ian Nanina's here. Great love to our beloved Aloye Ifa Karaday. I am so grateful. Many blessings, as well as another initiate in Obatala. She says, Oboru Oboye Abosise Oloye Ifa Karade. Adeshira Oshun Leke Yawo. So, yay, all of the cheerings are coming. But we're now, if you have a copy of your book, we're on page 22. And Baba placed in this book an excerpt from his novel, A Place of Nights, War and Resurrection. And I'm just gonna read a little bit because you have to get the novel 
to get the power. Okay. Yeah. It, yes. Uh, uh, forgive me. All right. Yes. Oh, no, please. If 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 people want to get the PDF like right now, and they can relaunch, they can go to that gumroad.com. And I have all the books there as PDF. They can purchase the PDF and click read and they can read right now, right now. Ia Onishango Day, if you would please post that link in the chat so it'll appear on YouTube and here on Facebook. You're watching us live on Facebook. Yeah. Um, post that Gumroad link, please. Mm -hmm. It should be in your text message. To where they can get the manuscripts right away immediately so that you don't even have to wait for them to come in the mail exactly so, after, so not, like after the show or either right now yeah okay? so it's not just a mailing list my people you know yes. it, it's it's a portal all I have, I have six books there and all you have to do upon purchase is you can download it or you can oh. just click you don't even have to oh. download it. You can click and it and and all the work will, uh, of whatever book you choose will. Oh my goodness! And again, we have a surprise before the end of the show. Y'all have to stay on because Aloye is gonna give a special gift to everyone who stopped by today. Uh, we're working on something spectacular. He, Bob is always working on something. When <laughs> when y'all ask why do I stay busy and I'm always producing because that's what he modeled for me <laughs> is to always be producing something good. So join the movement, get in the flow of the movement. Oh, there it is. Perfect. The Gumwood link is listed on the banner and here it is right there. So y'all can click on that link. You can sign up to get announcements. So when book two is released, you can come to the premiere of that. And um, the book launch, help with the book launch. You have book clubs, you know, um, anything yeah. you can do to support this beautiful work. We yeah. have book yes, two sir. is already book two is already out. Oh. It's, it's, it's already, there's no night and no day. Go ahead and tell them, Bob. <laughs> no night, no day. It's it's not in book form yet, but it's it's on uh, it's in the PDF. Oh my! So people God. can get book two like right oh. now. Oh my God. So literally so we, we celebrate on September 7th. We're just making okay. Yamaja's birthday. Okay. The official that. release date of Elder Reflections book two, which I have to share with y'all that Baba published my poem. My right. tribute that I wrote years ago when we hosted the first international EFA conference in Denver, Colorado, where the Aloye was presented with the Lifetime Achievement Award. And you can go online and see some of these videos and pictures. And on YouTube, there's footage from the conference. And so there was a poem that I was able to read that day, and it's never been published. So now it is a published poem, and that's a part of the book. So I'm, I, you know, as a poet, it's, you know, to have your work published is everything. So you not only get all of these fabulous essays and stories and teachings in the book too, you get to read a poem that uh, I wrote. So it's just, it's a glorious day. That's all I can say. So <laughs> get your copy. Carrie Day's drum. Now, now, act Kevin like you know what they say. <laughs> We have fun. But anyway, this is a place of nice. Yeah, okay, my dear. Mm -hmm. This is an excerpt from chapter four. I'm only going to read a little bit. Y'all have to get the book. <laughs> it says, children playing on the lakeshore stopped and stared in amazement at young woman lying there. She was wet and the sand oozed over her like thick honey. Fetal positioned, she lay motionless. Gathering around her, they pushed and prodded to see if she was alive. When it became clear she wasn't, they ran to tell Seneca Humani. The headsman, after informing his wife of his leaving, followed the excited youngsters. When he reached the body, he knelt and softly called her name, Nina. There was no response. 
He checked her vital signs and gently shook her. Her gleaming, transparent eyes slowly opened and he gazed into them. Her taut blue bronze skin glistened and her hair, long and twisted, fell below her back like the vines and reeds that grew, grew along the lakeside. I have you, he said, as he and the able youngsters carried her to his lodge. Foregoing morning rituals, the villagers followed. Ancient hymns sprang from their lips and smoke from their incense clouded the sky. Upon her husband's entrance, Mataji stopped everything and wrapped a tie-dyed cloth around the stranger who'd come from the lake. She then prepared a mixture of papaya, mangoes, rice, and yams and placed the mixture on the table. Nina looked around. She seemed unable to grasp her surroundings, her place in the world. She slowly stirred the food and ate in small bites. I'm going to stop there. I know y'all getting into it, right? <laughs> y'all like, no! <laughs> so you have to go and get the book. We're posting the link there in the chat that you can go and order today. And let's just blow it up, fam. You know, whether you go here uh, or go on Amazon and order your book. Some of you have Kindle and different platforms. And again, please post your review of the book. Share it on your social media so that we can support the Aloye, our beloved elder. So this uh, I'm going to please forgive me. Yes. yes, Father. I'm going to add to what you just read. Okay. Yes. Because I, I'm so moved. And I'm not, I'm hearing your voice. So deeply, okay. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish this up. So, please, good people, bear with me, okay. All right. So to catch, she slowly stirred the food and ate in small bites. Senor Kumani sat in front of her. Tell us who you are. Tell us why you're here. I'm Amina, priestess of Buluku. I've come to help you and all of humanity. Where do you come from? I come from the caverns beneath the lake the womb of earth, the home of God. Mm. Why have you come back to the world of the living? I've come back to be God's voice. Sinner Kumani leaned forward. What does God have to say? Mm. God's message is da, da, da. Mm. What is this da, da, da? Da is self-control and discipline. Mm. Da is bettering the world by increasing goodness in the world. Mm. Da is compassion for all things, living, dead, either, and neither. Mm. Will God save us, he asked. God will help us, but not save us. Mm. How will God help us? By sending me, God has done all he cares to do. Mm. Are you a spirit or a goddess? I am the priestess of Buluku. How shall we worship you? How shall we become your congregants? I'll not be worshipped, Amina said, nor will I have congregants. Mm. Villagers placed flowers at her feet and they reached out to touch her. And in their reaching, they forgot the dread of day and they forgot the war looming over them. Mm. They lost themselves in the knowledge that the great spirit lives and that he cared enough to send someone to help them. Then it goes on. But that da, 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 People are like, you know, where, where you get da, that? Da, da. The ancient Dravidians and, and Upanishads, okay? They carry this. <laughs> and when we look into the Yoruba, okay? Which of course is a misnomer of the Oyo and the Benin empires. <laughs> da, as in Eda, <laughs> is creation. <laughs> da ma, is the quieting of the senses as one prepares for meditation. Mm. Okay. Da wa is a solitary way of life in order to heighten one's spiritual nature and essence. So we keep seeing da throughout the traditions. Mm. Ifa. Okay. So when I make those connections, Whatever little bit of mine I have left, oh, it's gone. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I'm so glad that's recorded. 
Yeah. I'm have y'all gonna have to go back and play the replay to get that what Papa just taught yeah. us about da. Yeah, da da da. Mm. Mm. Discipline okay. and oneness and respect for all things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, so what else? What, 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 yeah, what, what else? What else? Okay, you know, after all this time. And for all we do, you know, it really gets broken down to something very simplistic, yet nearly impossible to achieve. (laughs) So we have to kind of step away from the complexity and the busyness and reflect. Isiri is to re- is 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 reflect reflection city mm-hmm. i r i s i sorry i can't do that <laughs> oh. nobody asked you i know siri <laughs> thought you were talking to her <laughs> <laughs> she does that to me all the time oh please woman <laughs> <laughs> laughter is awesome if you're just tuning in we're with the oloye ifa karaday I am love to Shia Asante, and we are talking about Baba's new book, newest book, Elder Reflections, book one. We are also celebrating today the release of book two, and Ioni Shango Day has posted the link where you can be among the first to get this book. So avail yourself and enjoy, enjoy. I have a couple more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Essay, Baba, on page 66. Oh, uh, you say that like it, <laughs> it means something. Okay. And right. it is, y'all, to show you how oh, long Baba you? has been on this journey. Okay. This is dated July 17, 1991. So he's been practicing Ifa for just a couple of days. <laughs> oh, I'm still a baby. Right, right, right. In, in this book, all oh, right. right. Ojise, Messenger of the Yoruba Tradition, and it was published in 1996 and by Red Wiser, one of the largest publishers of literature, uh, indigenous earth based spirituality. And Baba writes in this essay about Africa. And uh, Baba, I don't know, do you want to sh- read this? You were, I was just like, to hear you read is such. No, no, no. You I, inspired me. You inspired me. I love hearing your voice. Please continue. That was, yeah, y'all. Y'all got a gift today. That's all. I'm, oh, we have a lot of new comments. Okay. Let me read some of y'all's comments. All right. Uh, step away and reflect. Yes, 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 I concur. Modupe Baba on these powerful teachings. Da, da, da. They're saying it now. <laughs> <laughs> so just keep them coming. And if you have questions, family, again, I see so many of you on here. Um, this is an interactive discussion. And we're going to have one more time before we close that you're going to get to ask Baba questions about this book about the other books some of you i know almost everyone on here has the handbook many of you have a moye or jise global perspectives um if you have any of those books and you have questions if not get them today you can get them today uh thank you okay all right so let's read a little bit of this and you print pronounce bada is it badagri 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 yes dear okay Africa for the African descendant needs to be perceived as a place of healing that can only be described as soulful. Africa provides potent medicine, which must be taken, a medicine which is bitter to take at times, making it hard to swallow, a medicine which is sweet at times, making it hard to say enough. (laughs) A medicine that can make the senses screech due to levels of extreme agitation, 
or lull those very same senses to deep serenity, mm. bringing sound sleep and mystic visions. The medicine may cause cleansing reactions that painfully expose our illnesses. Yet Africa is a medicine which must be taken if we are to be healed. Mm. Say it again, pronounce it again. Badagri. Badagri. Yes. The noted Nigerian support made infamous by the selling of captured Africans during the horrid enslavement era of the 15th through the 19th centuries. It took us about an hour to reach Badagri from Lagos. We drove down the Nigerian turnpike. We passed tolls, armed militias, arrays of roadside markets and cultural arts stadium and the cultural arts stadium. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard that right. Mm -hmm. The friendly driver drove slowly into Badagri. The town reminded me of Ijigbo. Yes, said Ia. Badagri is much like, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Ijigbo. Ijigbo. That's all right. Ejibo, yes, That's all right. Mm -hmm. But it is a spiritual matter, not an economic one. The ancestors have instructed people not to change too much. I silently nodded. I silently understood. We found the slave building, which was located near the shoreline. A teenage boy directed us to the inside of the stone construction built and utilized for the sole purpose of containing those African persons enslaved. Here, they waited in chains for the European slave ships. The young teen mechanically demonstrated the various chains and torture implements used to inflict pain and fear. He told us of the village chief who assisted the European enslavers in the amassing of African souls for the New World bondage. The tomb of his chief was ironically placed in this slave fortress. I just want to read a couple more paragraphs. Mm -hmm. As you saw, when Baba got to that meat and that other one, I was so excited. The guide pointed to the nearby cannon. Here is the cannon, he continued in clear English. If anyone was caught outside after its third sounding, then they too would be captured and sold. He was speaking of those people who actually lived in the town. By this time, I was cast into a pit-like state of anger, confusion, hurt, and disgust, emptiness, loneliness, bitterness, and pain. Do you understand, asked Ia? I understand how they cried, but hit perhaps a bit too strongly. Mm. We both became silent. So literally, you are with the Oloye on one of his pilgrimage to the continent, to the motherland. Yeah. And which he experienced the energies and some of the horrors that our ancestors went through. The OG say, I mean, the handbook is an international bestseller. It's in multiple languages in many countries. Mm -hmm. But one of my favorites is OG say, I actually have my copy, <laughs> which I've had for many years. I know it, there it is. Kind of see the co cover there. I'm sorry, these mirror reflections. There we go. This is OG say, it's actually one of my favorite books. Yeah because you really feel like you are with the Oloya. And if you haven't had the blessing of going home to Africa, you will really feel that messenger who speaks in this story and his personal accounts. And it's a healing. It, it, the book is really a healing salve for people of African descent, people of color and conscious. Yeah. Baba, can you talk a little bit about this passage and share what it was like to be on the land and in that energy at that moment? I'm going to be able to do that in yes. in part because it was, it was so much, so much. Yes. I'm going to continue the next two paragraphs of what yes. you read. You know, we're like like peaches and herb right now. Aspirin and Simpson. You know what I mean? We, <laughs> All right, let 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 the, let the music play. Uh, after everything that Yanifa stated, as I stepped outside, 
I was overcome by a mysterious pull. I felt the need to be alone. I felt the need to answer the call of the winds, the winds that rippled across the vastness of time. I needed to feel the soil beneath my feet to wade in the waters. I needed to be at this place, which may have very well been the pit of my ancestral rupture. At the water's edge, I removed my sandals and rolled up the cuffs of my pants. As I walked into the sea, I gazed skyward. I was uplifted. I felt my spirit rise. I was speechless. Leaning forward, I washed my already submerged feet and lower legs. Then, without rational reason, I felt myself being drawn down into the depths. Mm. I did not resist. Mm. I allowed my body to bend further down until I could easily scoop up handfuls of ocean and then pour it over my more than receptive being. And I'll leave it there. Ooh. That's page 66, family. Now, and, and, and as I carry this into, you know, the question about, you know, the, the, the sojourn, you know, yes. to, to Africa, I think this may have been, well, this was July of 91. This was my first time there. I went back, you know, for confirmation. Yes. Uh, in Ejibo, but I was there in Kenya in 77. What? And, you know, it, it took that three times mm. for me to emerge from the shadows mm. of this educational system, of this Eurocentric mindset, of this repetition of religious indoctrination you know, it, it took time and effort to emerge, to, to break free and not carry into Isheshe the very elements that were keeping me from it. And to connect again with the ancestors going back to chicken wing and going back to great great grandma and going back to actually living in a slave cabin because that's where I was, you know, first brought into an awareness of myself. Okay. It's like, what is it that we need to do in order not to in increase our levels of worldliness, but to increase our being in the other reality of this life yeah. and it's not delusional it's not illusional it's just separated mm -hmm. and when you visit one of these slave fortresses i refuse to call them castles yeah. fortresses and and you hear the voice and you see the chains and 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 you come to grips with the totality of it as much as we possibly can And something happens as a result. Something has to happen. Okay. And then we are uplifted in our understanding of what it is that we have to do. And that is continue a legacy. And you can't continue a legacy if you're not reflecting on what has happened, if you're not knowledgeable of what has happened. And if you don't become a voice to continue the importance of what you say you believe in. Mm -hmm. Shay, Shay, Baba. Y'all, this, I can't even, there's no words. I have one more passage that I want to go on uh, talk about before we close yes dear. i know we are purchasing the books i'm really happy to see how many of you are saying you're getting the copy and uh ioni shangode has posted links for all of the uh books that are online as well as the website the gumroad yeah. uh, website address 
where you can get the PDF copies of the book immediately. And if you again have your account and your credits with Amazon, that's fine too. And you know, please be sure to write a great review again. So I want to read from page 73. Mm -hmm. And it talks, you have a section called critical points. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to close with a bang. You <laughs> sure you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole, I want to say this is a uh -huh. whole stop. Baba mm -hmm. has lectured extensively in, in the college and the academic systems. If you work with a university or you're at an organization, where um, the lawyer can come and speak to your contingent or if you have a sorority or fraternity um you know get in touch um, if you don't have the contact information y'all can you know inbox me and i'll connect you with the lawyer and his people to arrange for him to come out because this knowledge you know is so powerful that's why one of the i think is the second or the third book that the lawyer wrote was called Imoye. Uh, which I had to look up these words. This is kind of <laughs> the way that I learned Yoruba mm -hmm. was looking up the meaning of the titles of the Oloye's book. But you learn about the knowledge and the wisdom of Ifa and the definition uh, through that book. So that's also one of my favorites. But in Critical Points, page 73 in Elder Reflections, book one, Baba talks about the enslavement period. And he writes... White slavery is a fascinating area of study and, if nothing else, levels the playing field on one hand and on the other bespeaks man's inhumanity to man, regardless of color or class or notions of religion and cultural. Whites in the world have suffered enslavement, yet this area of study is virtually absent in U.S. educational curriculum. But the enslavement of that of blacks is a matter of general knowledge. I'm just going to read a couple more of these. Mainstream mass media and literature don't in mass pre present the horrors of white slavery, but they do emphasize how Africans were subjugated, subjugated, and how uncivilized they were before capture and conversion. And those books and movies that do go to great lengths to not dehumanize or overly reduce the defeated to complete subhuman standards as a matter of recognizing the fight against other Europeans are often presented as heroic. So these things that the Aloye is talking about here, you know, are the subtle ways that the consciousness and views and imagery of people of African descent, people of color and conscious is shaped in the world and he writes in the critical point number four, if we're going to address slavery, then let's do so on a global scale so that it becomes very clear that the tactics created and applied aren't relegated to Africans. They were in existence long before the Atlantic slave British Protestants, Protestants, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. not enslaved Africans, but they enslaved the Irish and Scottish as well. So I'll stop at five. I mean, in these critical points, and especially if y'all are part of the our, our community, our extended and community family, the Caraday lineage, we want to study these points as well as the general public are encouraged to study these critical points that the Aloye lists in this section of the book because they're so plainly put that and someone says, uh, oh, someone is quoting. It says, it was always my understanding the white slave was, was indentured servitude mm -hmm. with a finite length of time. Exactly. This is a YouTube viewer right now who was making that comment. Mm -hmm. So again, yes, this is how we can you know, help to deconstruct these systems of slavery and white supremacy that are so harmful to our humanity as a whole. Right. Oloye, could you speak a bit on the critical points? Yes. Um, just kind of riding the winds of the person whom you just read from about the indentured servant. Absolutely. 
or in, in school, throughout the halls of academia, okay? If whites were in any way equated to enslavement, it was through the indentured servant process. But that's not true. That is not true, okay? And I'm not, you know, speculating here. I have research all throughout the essay documented and i'll take uh, prior to this chapter of white slavery's global history is the fact that the a.d 8th century to the 12th dublin ireland was the slave capital of europe mm. nothing to do with africans nothing okay both Ireland and British Isles were invaded by Vikings who destroyed villages and newly formed churches. Jim O'Donnell writes in his article, The Slave Market of Viking Dublin, at the time of this Celtic tiger economy was the trade in what Vikings called thralls or slaves. And the slave market provided labor and concubines to from the British Isles to, the Scan, from, to Scandinavia and even to Muslim Spain. Mm. And that's just one of the quotes. I could go back to slavery in medieval Italy. Wow. Where the Italians were held. And see, we, we can see, for example, uh, Gladiator, uh, the movie with Russell Crowe, all right? Mm. And, and we look at that and it's like, okay, he's so heroic and all of that. But they were enslaved. The Romans were enslaving everybody that they came in contact with. And then taking the able bodies and sometimes the not so able bodies and putting them in the Colosseums and working them to death. Okay. And 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 all kinds of horrible things were happening to the point where people were revolting and rebelling. Okay. In any way and by any means necessary. And this had nothing to do with Africans. Nothing. And then we start looking at the Barbary Coast, where the Muslims were raiding Europe and taking whites as slaves back to Arabia. Now, we know all of this was happening to African people. Why do we know it? Because we're bombarded with it. And why are we bombarded with it? Well, to subjugate us, to socially engineer us and psychologically traumatize us continually. Okay and never present in a traumatizing and defeating way that whites were enslaving whites long before they were enslaving blacks mm -hmm. and for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. And whites were being enslaved by the Middle Eastern Muslims, okay? And this is not a part of our study, our lineage. Now, I could go on, but I'm not. I, I, I just want to address, especially for those of us who are into Isheshe or mm -hmm. Afrocentric, you know, consciousness and all of that, mm -hmm. that if we don't see that, mm -hmm. you know, in, in its reality, as hard as it is, and as much as we've been conditioned to not see mm -hmm. that, Oops. Yeah then we, we, we're we still stuck in that, oh, we were slaves box, you know? And, oh, you know, if it wasn't for this and that, we would still, yeah, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. This is an ongoing process of man's inhumanity to man. Mm -hmm. And when the, this really hit me when I was in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. for example, and speaking with the people, okay? Mm -hmm. I was invited there, you know, to speak on mm -hmm. Ifa, mm -hmm. but I didn't go there to speak on EFA. Yeah, to learn about Europeans. Yes. Okay. Not yes. for any mal reason, you know, yes. but I, I, hey, if I'm going, I'm going to learn. And yes. speaking with people who didn't know who their grandmothers were and speaking with people whose mothers have been traumatized during yes. the world wars. The yes. World War I killed more people then those of us who would put numbers on were enslaved. Mm. And then add to that World War II. 
So they were killing each other off. The Japanese were taking uh, uh, British soldiers, European soldiers, and enslaving them in, in their labor camps. Yes. Just like Hitler was taking not only the Jews, but the Polacks, the, the Polish people, okay, mm -hmm. and the surrounding other people, and he was treating them mm -hmm. just like they were treating the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. the, the, you, you understand? And so when we start to see this on a global scale as opposed mm -hmm. to, oh, whoa, it just happened to us, and you know, no, 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 no. We, we, if, if we're going to lift humanity, we have to lift ourselves. Awesome. You know, and this yeah. is fact. This is not conjecture. This is not speculation. This is yeah. fact. Yeah. You know, Mitsubishi was enslaving people. Yeah. Okay. But they call themselves prisoners of war. Well, guess yeah. what? Our young men were prisoners of war also yeah. when you were first bringing them over here because we, we were fighting back. Yeah. As quiet as it's kept. We just weren't running around, you know, in, 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 the, in, the, in the forest and everything. We had mm -hmm. fighting systems. We have warriors. We have regalia. We have weapons. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we, we got to lift from this, oh, woe was me kind of energy and attitude. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And somebody said, well, your ancestors were slaves. I look right back at them and so were yours. Yeah. And just like you can prove that mine were, I can prove that yours were. So either we're going to be eye to eye or I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you're talking foolishness right now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so many amazing thoughts and comments. And, you know, we are so excited and inspired by all of them who came and stayed the entire show. <laughs> and I know you. many of you, please share the link to the show, the YouTube recording of the show. Please post on your social media. So as many people will learn more about Oloye's work and this new book and the movement that he has for grandfather. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to thank you again for being a guest on the window, but more importantly, on today, where across the world, my Orisha Yemaja is being honored and celebrated with feast and food and song and drumming. I have to give homage to you and Ia Sequoia Karadet, mm -hmm. as well as Awo Akinkukbe Karadet mm -hmm. for placing my feet in the mud and the medicine on my head and in my ori, activating it as you told me. And I will be forever so many blessings. I thank you today on her day because she has saved my life so mm -hmm. many times and blessed my, my children my grandchildren, my family, See? it is because of you. Shit. And I must always acknowledge, you know, that this nation that you gave birth to yeah. through the womb of Obatala and your brilliance and your mind and your consciousness and what you taught us. And the Tai Chi, I have a funny story about the Tai Chi. <laughs> the first time that Baba came to visit uh. in Colorado to do a lecture at the um, College of uh, Isla School of Theology. Mm -hmm. When he first came to visit the home, it was like 6 a.m. and we were preparing for our day's events. And Aloye went out, as he does often, to do his Tai Chi in the morning. And our dog was outside and we were like, oh, you know, he's going to get bit. The dog is going to tap attack him because she doesn't let anybody come in that yard that she doesn't know. <laughs> and he says, oh, it's all right. And he walks out into that yard and we're standing, my family and I are standing with our mouths gaped open because when he goes into the first Tai Chi pose, the dog Nandi just lays at his feet. <laughs> I believe it. But it speaks volumes. Uh, your yeah, cool. <laughs> because she knew that this was a friend. Yeah. And she saw your divinity. That's, I mean, the beauty, the pureness of animals. Yes. Yes. And yes, and so on and so on. I mean, there's so many stories like that mm -hmm. that we could tell of, of the beauty and the power of what you have created. And from the moment that I walked into your home, which was like a three, you know, huge brownstone yeah. in, on the East Coast. And everywhere I looked, there were images of me as an African woman. 
and that changed me. Whew, I don't want to get emotional, but it's okay. Emotions from are inside out. Yeah, it changed me in the whole course of my life. Wow. And the way that you taught with non extremism, right. you're teaching us about the importance of what we put in our body food. You know, not that we have to be perfect, right. but to eat life giving foods the importance of exercise and movement, which you modeled every day for us while we were there and scholarly study, yeah, sure. that it's not just about the rituals, but right. it's about what we put inside and self mastery yes. was also the principle that you Oloye, and you introduced that. And many, you know, we say that it can be imitated, but never duplicated. Okay. <laughs> so we give homage, we give homage, we give homage today on the Amajas Day. And to all of you who are listening and watching us live, we thank you for coming out, for supporting today the Aloye Ifa Karaday. Long live the Karaday Nation. And thus we rise, we continue to rise, to excel as Baba says, we're still doing it and even more. Please go online today and support by purchasing your copy, sharing the good news of the work of the Aloyan and continuing to keep the legacy strong. And as Baba teaches us, we turn the people to the church. Kama Orisha. Look to the Orisha. <laughs> and Baba, do you have any closing remarks? Uh, I do, but it would be a whole nother show. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that love, okay, however it's defined, please embrace it as a container for everything, everything. And if the word unconditional starts to make any sense, it's in the acceptance. And then we master how we respond. So love everything all the time. Dance in the rain, feel the wind, give homage to the essence of your origin. Give them you. Ashe. Ashe, oh everybody. Goodbye. Have a fabulous rest of your Saturday. Share the video, share the video, share the video. And tag us so that we know you did. We love you. Oh, yeah.